there's a significant amount of people here that are getting up in the morning and praying to God that there's water when they turn their faucet on. It's that, it's gotten to that point, it's that critical. Behind me is the dairy, the Coronado Farms, and they are a very big important part of our economy. We're coming up on a place that ran out of water and you're gonna see the trees are all dead. All the time thinking of new ways to get water and be thinking of new ways to capture water. We do have wells that are affected by large pumping areas and those wells do, the water level drops every year. Not all the wells have gone dry, but sure a lot of them have. All of your agricultural water is coming from groundwater. With more farms and more drilling, there's more pull in the aquifer, you know. It's gonna get deeper and it's, you know, deeper to drill, deeper to pump, you know, and it's just gonna get more expensive. They have no vested interest here. They've just taken the water, and when they use up the water, they'll be gone. This is Wilcox, Arizona, one of only six cities in Cochise County, which is the southeasternmost county in Arizona, just north of the Mexican border. Like a true Sonoran desert, it's hot and it's dry. But Wilcox is special because there's no surface water here. The only water available to anyone or anything around here is underground. Despite that, three quarters of the businesses here revolve around agriculture. Surrounded by mountains, the aquifer here is what's called a closed basin, meaning it can only be refilled by rain. Yet stretching out toward the horizon are disks of green as far as the eye can see. These alien looking formations are crop circles, with the irrigation anchored to the center of the field, rotating in endless circles, watering concentric rows of crops. But these crops are used almost exclusively for cattle feed, and in the last four years, an out of state conglomerate known as Riverview has moved a lot of cattle here. This Riverview dairy feedlot is raising 65,000 of them, and there's another dairy feedlot under construction down the road. And that has some local residents worried given the amount of water needed to hydrate and feed so many cows. In the shadow of these huge operations, groundwater levels are falling, leaving some residential wells dry. And unlike a company with deep pockets, residents and smaller farmers can't always afford to drill deeper to get to water. So you may be wondering, why did big agriculture come to the desert of rural Arizona? To answer that, you need to understand who was here first. Uh, my family's been here over 100 years around 115 years, I think. My great-great-grandfather took some cattle, about 200 head, and moved them over here to Arizona. The Clumps are a ranching family through and through. According to Tim, they work about 800 cows on at least 150,000 acres throughout Cochise County. In 1980, the state of Arizona changed its groundwater laws, turning it into a public good instead of a property right but rural residents put up enough of a thorny resistance to keep most of these areas exempt from any regulations or oversight under the new law. I don't believe that if I'm using the water there and it's my livelihood, I don't believe anyone else owns that right except me for my pursuit of happiness, for me doing my thing. We do have wells that are affected by large pumping areas and it worries you to a certain extent, but it's not ever been my place to judge. And I've always believed in whatever somebody wants to do, then they can go do it. For generations, farmers and ranchers were free to farm and ranch as they saw fit here. But that rural independence also opened the door to powerful outsiders willing to take advantage of the lax regulations in this area, something which has local residents fearful for the future. I've been here 14 years in this home and I love this place so much. It's so vibrant and has so much uh, vitality. A major, major concern right now is the dairy um, that is a feedlot and it's basically right behind me. A lot of people are sad. A lot of people are worried. A lot of people are very concerned and upset. I 
got to know a friend of mine and she has this beautiful ranch and the day came when she sold to them recently. She was backed into a corner. We're losing community. We're losing our neighbors. This is my life. This is what I created. This is my hard work. This is the expression of my integrity. And I love this place. I belong here. This is a desert. And for them to bring in that many cattle, no way, no way. It doesn't make good sense. Simple as that. All this, this stuff, it needs to stop. This is what she's talking about when she says it needs to stop. Before 2014, this was an 8,000 cow dairy. Now, it's a 6,000 cow dairy plus a 65,000 cow feedlot that's raising cows from calves to full-grown milking cows before shipping them to the Midwest for milking. In 2012, a zoning ordinance change all but eliminated the cap on the number of cows a dairy operation could raise. Then, in December of 2014, Riverview LLP, a beef and dairy empire headquartered in Morris, Minnesota, purchased this dairy for $38 million in cash. Riverview then rechristened the farm Coronado Dairy and began a 40-year buying spree described by local residents as shady, greedy, and intimidating. According to a local newspaper interview, when asked about purchasing surrounding land in late 2015, a company representative said, it's not our style to go out looking for land. But public records show that by the time that interview is given, Riverview had already purchased at least 45 parcels of land across 21 transactions totaling $18 million in the first year alone. Despite repeated conversations with NBC News, Riverview declined all on-camera interview requests. But during a call with NBC News, a Riverview representative did say they were aware of the water situation and did their due diligence before moving here. They are committed to sustainable water usage. They plan to be here for the long haul, and they're a very transparent farm. Interviews with numerous residents and a public records investigation totaling hundreds of documents paint a different picture. To grasp the full extent of Riverview's operations requires untangling a complicated web of partnerships, holding companies, and financial instruments. The company used to access more than $140 million in loans and a $500 million revolving line of credit, and purchase more than 20,000 acres across Cochise County. Taken together, Riverview and its agents spent at least $129 million on property alone. That doesn't include costs of drilling new wells, paving roads, construction costs, etc. Residents who NBC News interviewed spoke often of huge cash offers for land that owners didn't want to sell, but felt pressured into as their wells dried up, their property became surrounded, or the cash offer was simply too good to pass up. One seller said they couldn't speak with NBC News because Riverview had forced them to sign a non-disclosure agreement as part of the land purchase. Another resident, who asked not to be named for fear of repercussions, said, and in this tone of voice, everything that they've done, they've done in mass amounts and with such speed and vigor that it's like a freight train. They have an agenda and they have goals and they're doing it. And it doesn't make a bit of difference how or why. Riverview refused to comment on any specific land deals. Riverview will soon open a second dairy and feedlot operation down the road called Turkey Creek Dairy, which will eventually house an additional 60,000 plus head of cattle, bringing the grand total to more than 120,000 cattle in the Wilcox area. That's about a 30 to one cow to human ratio for Wilcox. In total, Riverview will farm and irrigate more than 20,000 acres it owns here for livestock feed while also providing each cow with the two to 40 gallons of water it needs a day. So how is Riverview coming by all that water? They're drilling, deep and often. There's no average day is the problem. It's drilling life. We drilled 24 hours a day, seven days a week uh, on farm agricultural wells. Without drillers like BJ drilling, no one can access water at all. Neither residents, nor municipalities, nor farmers. But as the water table drops, prices rise. Watch the trend of what it cost to drill a well 10 years ago versus what it cost to drill a well today. It's increased probably twofold as what it used to cost to drill a hole. We're, all, we're having to drill deeper. It doesn't show any signs of letting up. And the cost to get to guaranteed water? It all depends the size of the hole. A domestic well is about like purchasing a car, probably anywhere in the $30,000 range. Some of your bigger 16 inch cased wells are touching easy a half a million dollars. And that's just to drill the hole. 
That doesn't include the pump to pull the water or the electricity, natural gas, or diesel to run the pump. Companies like Riverview have the resources to sink deep wells at will. To put it in perspective, the average well depth in the Wilcox Basin before 2000 was around 270 feet, or about 30 feet shorter than the Statue of Liberty. Since Riverview moved in, their newly drilled wells average slightly more than 1,200 feet deep, or about 50 feet shorter than the Empire State Building. And their deepest well? 2,453 feet deep almost as tall as two Empire State Buildings stacked on top of one another. Unlike deep-pocketed industrial farms, local residents face a harsh reality when their well dries up. I decided uh, one day that it would be nice to get a piece of property with water and also commercial rights to grow something. It would be a good retirement, but uh, it didn't work out that way. In the late 90s, Reynolds purchased this property in Alfreda, Arizona to transition into retirement. I had a, a well inspector come out and inspect the commercial well and it had gone dry and there was there was no there was no fixing. We're talking about uh, close to thirty five thousand dollars and I I didn't have it. And I lost everything. I, I I've got over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars into the property and I would be lucky to get twenty out of it. I was totally out of control of the situation and the choices I had to make were not my own. That made me angry. I haven't really scraped up the pieces because I still have this property I'm responsible for. I, I hate to even go out there. I can't even go look at the place. You know, I just can't do it. Peggy Judd is the elected official responsible for balancing constituent concerns with business interests for Northern Cochise County. She requested we conduct the interview here. We're here because behind me is the dairy, the Coronado Farms, and they are a very big, important part of our economy. Hundreds, literally thousands of people in this valley that appreciate them for what they are. They plan to be here forever. They would not have moved here and put the many, 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 many millions of dollars into this operation if they weren't going to stay. Supervisor Judd told NBC News she sent her talking points to Mariah White at Coronado Dairy for review before conducting this interview. Mariah and I work really closely and I knew they had not wanted to participate in this filming project. So I wanted to make sure that they knew where, where I stand. They definitely have a understanding of how their presence affects the groundwater. The dairy does understand that. When asked about fear of overusing groundwater, Supervisor Judd said, It's being replenished. It's not, a, the, it's not stagnant. The way it's been described for years and years and years is a river. It's coming from somewhere else. When asked if there are significant flows coming under the mountains to replenish the Wilcox Basin, Arizona Department of Water Resources chief hydrologist said evidence indicated that was not the case. In fact, he said the groundwater model for the Wilcox Basin shows more water flowing out of the basin than into it each year, and that's before factoring in pumping. Our 100-year modeling projections, which basically anticipate keeping agricultural pumping about the same as it is currently, we project drawdowns of over 900 feet. If water levels drop 900 feet, as he predicts, residents will be all but priced out of the valley for good. If there is additional agricultural production or other types of high water use industries that are added to the basin, it will have an increasingly negative effect on groundwater levels. The problem for this basin and rural Arizona as a whole is that additional agricultural production is coming to the state. In 2013, one of the country's largest tomato growers, Nature Sweet Tomatoes, purchased $55 million worth of property and assets in Graham County just north of Wilcox to grow tomatoes in the desert. In Cochise County, out-of-state conglomerates have planted thousands of acres of water-intensive pecan trees over the last few years. This influx of corporate farms isn't limited to domestic companies, though. In 2014, Al Murai Dairy, Saudi Arabia's largest dairy company, purchased some 14,000 acres across drought-stricken California and Arizona to grow alfalfa, one of the most water-intensive crops, that it then ships back to Saudi Arabia to feed to their cows there. The bottom line? As water becomes less available around the world, access to cheap, clean, and unregulated water will attract the type of corporate farms and foreign conglomerates buying up huge tracts of land seen throughout rural Arizona. 
and with the deep pockets to drill even deeper wells, the water table could eventually drop below the reach of residents for good. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.